With Formula 1 testing having started already, I thought it would be a great idea to talk about another Formula 2 driver and this time I will talk about the very interesting case of Marcus Armstrong. Will he be the next Kiwi in Formula 1 and how will he do in Formula 2 Rio, this season? Rio, well, Rio, it's time to find that out. On the 20th of July 2000, a New Zealander was born in Christchurch. The lad was named Marcus Armstrong and he started karting in 2010. Marcus won 7 championships in New Zealand and finished 3rd and 2nd in some very highly rated karting championships in Europe. In 2013 he already drove his first races in cars ever, however there was just some regional championship driven in road cars. He made his open wheel racing debut in 2015 when he drove in the New Zealand Formula Ford, actually winning one of his 3 races and he drove in those road cars as well winning three more races. In 2016 he made his debut in Europe having guest appearances in British F3 and Formula Renault Euro Cup 2.0. He made his real debut in 2017 driving with Prema and ADAC and Italian F4 and as you may know Driving with Prema pretty much guarantees you a top 5 spot in the standings except if your surname is Alcabesi or Galel. Anyway, Marcus won the Italian F4 championship and finished second in ADAC F4. In 2017 and 2018 he also ran in the Toyota Racing Series, finishing 4th and 3rd and winning 5 races in total. Marcus also participated in the Macau Grand Prix in 2018 and 2019, finishing 8th both times. He also drove in European F3 with Prema and he won 1 race, finishing 5th in the total standings. At the start of 2019, Marcus drove in the Toyota Racing Series once again and he won 5 of his 15 races and finished 2nd second in the championship behind Liam Lawson, this year's fellow F2 driver and fellow Kiwi. When the FIA F3 championship was formed, Marcus Armstrong would drive for Prema in the inaugural season. This turned out to be a big success as he won 3 races and finished second in the championship. Meanwhile Prema had a 1-2-3 in the championship and obviously winning the constructors championship as well. 2020 would be his worst ever season in single seaters. He started off the season pretty good, finishing second in the first race of the season and also finishing third in the sprint race in round 2 but after that he didn't finish in the points for 12 races straight. The 4 races after that he got 4 points and in the 2 races at the Bahrain International Circuit, the traditional layout, he finished 7th and 4th in those 2 races. Ultimately he finished 13th in the championship whereas his teammate Christian Lungard finished 7th. After the first 2 race weekends Christian achieved very good results whereas Marcus didn't finish in the points once in 12 races and this is also known as the ARTGP, the curse of the second driver. Examples of this are Alex Alban who drove with ART in 2017 finishing 10th that year and with Dams in 2018 and he finished 3rd and was promoted up to F1 the year after. Also Jack Aitken and Nikita Mazabin finished out of the top 10 with ART and achieved the top 5 finish the year after. Since this has happened 3 times in a row now I think the same situation will occur for Marcus Armstrong this year. Marcus will be driving alongside Roy Nissani so it's guaranteed Armstrong will beat his teammate but can he finish in the top 3 of the championship? Well Dams finished in the top 3 in the constructors and the drivers championship 3 times in the last 4 years and their worst classification was last year when they drove with Sean Galel and Dan Tictum and that, especially the first one, explains why they finished so low. Even if that happened, they can come back very quickly as for example Prema finished 9th in 2019 and 1st in 2020 so maybe HWA Race Lab can win this year's championship. Oh wait wait wait. However I'm wondering again, let's go back to Marcus Armstrong. What can he do this year? He finished off last season pretty decent and he finished in the points twice on the Bahrain circuit, actually finishing 4th in the sprint race. At the pre-season tests which have been at the start of this week, Marcus's old teammate Lungard had the quickest time overall and Marcus himself finished 3rd on the overall timing sheet, of course. This doesn't mean anything as the fuel amount and most importantly the tire compounds of all the drivers are different and we don't know which tires the drivers set their times on. However, this will still give Armstrong a confidence boost for the first race of the season which will also be driven in Bahrain from the 26th to the 28th of March. And if you want to know more about this year's F2 season, check out the video named The Ultimate Guide to F2 of me, it will be up on the screen now. Coming back to Marcus, I think he will have a redemption season this year. I think he will surely finish in the top 5 and maybe take a win or two but what is chances on formula one well first of all he's in the ferrari driver academy and there are a lot of talents in the fda i'm naming robert schwarzman callum arlet and in f1 already mick schumacher there are more upcoming talents like dino beganovic and arthur leclerc as well although i do not think Arthur will reach f1 for the possible 2022 seats in f1 ferrari has two engine consumers haas and alfa romeo sauber and as nikita Mazepin is in that haas seat and brings a lot of money to the team he won't leave anytime soon and schumacher 
staircase in the other seat and I don't expect him to switch to Alfa Romeo so there's a maximum of two seats available at Alfa Romeo and if Alfa takes on the challenge there are two seats available to three amazing talents. As Robert Schwarzman is with Prema he will be guaranteed of a top 5 spot in its standings and I think he's the favorite for the F2 title of this year. Robert also has a lot of Russian financial backing so I think his chances are the highest on that Alfa Romeo seat in 2022. If Marcus finishes in the top 3 in Formula 2 this year, he is number 2 in my opinion. And if he finished out of the top 3, he is the number 3 in my list behind Callum Eilert. I'm saying all this as if there won't be a chance for him anymore in 2023, but of course there is a possibility too. But he has to do another year of Formula 2 then and that costs a lot of money. Obviously Alfa Romeo has to drop both drivers as well, so it's all just theoretic. If Marcus won't reach F1, what will he do? Well, I think Marcus can drive in a series like Formula E if Ferrari joins, or he will leave the Ferrari Driver Academy and drive in endurance series like LMP World Endurance Championship or other possibilities are of course Formula E without Ferrari or some GT series. There are a lot of racing series and teams who want big talents like Marcus. Of course if racing doesn't work out he can also become an influencer. So. What do you think about Marcus Armstrong? Do you think he has a future in Formula 1 or do you think he will have his future in Formula E or racing or even out of racing? Let me know all that down in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe as well. For now, thanks for watching. Bye bye!